when we break down amino acids inside our liver, we essentially remove that alpha amino group. And what we have left over is a carbon skeleton. So in this lecture and the next several lectures, what I'd like to focus on is the fate of that carbon skeleton. So when we metabolize amino acids and we form that carbon skeleton by removing that alpha amino group, what exactly happens to that carbon skeleton? So all the carbon skeletons that we form when we metabolize the 20 different types of amino acids inside our liver cells all those carbon skeletons lead to one of seven different molecules. And all these seven molecules are intermediates of the metabolic pathway, the metabolic system that allows us to generate high energy ATP molecules. So let's recall some basic facts about metabolic pathways. So let's begin with the citric acid cycle. So this is our citric acid cycle. And inside our liver, the point of the citric acid cycle is to help us generate oxaloacetate. Why? Because oxaloacetate is ultimately the starting material to produce glucose via gluconeogenesis as it takes place inside our liver cell. So if we can form any one of these intermediate molecules that can ultimately help us form oxaloacetate and that can lead to glucose production. Now inside our liver, we can actually use pyruvate to basically form oxaloacetate. And this pathway is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. And so what that means is we can use pyruvate to actually help us generate glucose because if we transform pyruvate to oxaloacetate, we can then use this in gluconeogenesis to help us form glucose. Now, what about this pathway here? So if we take pyruvate, the second fate of pyruvate is to undergo decarboxylation. So the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase transforms pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A. Now, what happens to acetyl coenzyme A? Well, we can use acetyl coenzyme A to help us generate fatty acids, but we can also use acetyl coenzyme A to help us generate ketone bodies. So by transforming acetyl coenzyme A to acetoacetyl coenzyme A, this ultimately can be transformed into ketone bodies. Now, one fact that you have to remember is acetyl coenzyme A cannot be used, at least inside humans, to actually generate glucose molecules. And what that means is, even though it seems like we can use acetyl coenzyme A, transform it into citric acid cycle, ultimately form oxaloacetate, and then form glucose via gluconeogenesis, that is not actually true. And the reason is the following. When we use acetyl coenzyme A and we feed it into the citric acid cycle, we actually use up a single oxaloacetate. So we use a single oxaloacetate combined with acetyl coenzyme A and we form citrate. And so ultimately, even though we do form oxaloacetate at the end, we use up one oxaloacetate at the beginning and the net result is zero. So what that means is we cannot use acetyl coenzyme A to help us form glucose in our liver. Now let's focus on all these different amino acids. So basically, if we metabolize an amino acid and the carbon skeleton of that amino acid is used to form any one of these intermediates here or pyruvate, these are known as glucogenic. So glucogenic amino acids are those amino acids that when metabolized help us form intermediates that ultimately lead to the production of glucose. So that includes all these, 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 and these. So for example, let's take tryptophan. Tryptophan, if it follows a specific pathway, that will ultimately lead to the production of pyruvate. Now pyruvate basically goes this way via the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme that forms oxaloacetate and that then helps us form glucose via gluconeogenesis. Now if we look at aspartate for example, 
aspartate can be transformed into oxaloacetate and we actually looked at this example in, in a uh, previous lecture and then the oxaloacetate goes on to form glucose via gluconeogenesis. So all of these amino acids are known as glucogenic. Now if we look at these, these and these ultimately helps us form these two molecules. And so these can then be used to form ketone bodies. So these are known as ketogenic. So all of these are ketogenic. Now the only ones that are solely, strictly ketogenic are actually leucine and lysine. Why? Well, because tryptophan, if it follows one pathway, we can form acetyl coenzyme A, in which case it's ketogenic. In a different pathway, it can form acetoacetyl coenzyme A, again, it's ketogenic. But in this pathway, it helps us form pyruvate. And pyruvate goes this way to help us form glucose. Now, we can also go this way, of course, and this will be ketogenic. But if we look strictly on this pathway, this pathway is glucogenic. So tryptophan is both glucogenic and ketogenic. So the only ones which are only ketogenic are leucine and lysine. This is the list of all the glucogenic only, we have 14, and this is the list of both ketogenic and glucogenic. So as we saw earlier, we have tryptophan, but we also have isoleucine, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. So uh, my suggestion, if you're gonna memorize these, memorize these two and these four, but don't memorize this, because if you memorize these two, you know the other 14, which essentially must be glucogenic only. Now, one caveat, however, is the way I've listed is I have 14 glucogenic and four under both. Sometimes you're going to see threonine listed under both. So that means we have 13 here, not including threonine, and five here, including threonine. And that's simply because of the way you define glucogenic. So if you define glucogenic one way, the threonine ends up being here. If you define a different way, the threonine ends up being here. Now, that's really not too important. What's important here is to notice that the majority of the amino acids that are metabolized inside our liver actually end up being metabolized into glucose because 14, or in some cases 13, essentially end up being transformed into glucose. And then that glucose can be used to help our cells generate high energy ATP molecules. So in the next several lectures, we're basically going to look at the actual pathways that lead to all these different intermediates when we actually metabolize the 20 amino acids.